For the next week or two, we're going to study sequences and series. And sequences are something that you should have looked at in Algebra 1. So let's see how much you remember. A sequence essentially is an ordered list of numbers. A very famous sequence would be the Fibonacci sequence, which is obtained by taking two numbers and adding them to get the next term in the sequence. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, and this would be a sequence because it's a list of numbers that follows a pattern. Now we want to be able to refer to different terms in the sequence. So usually, um, if I'm talking about a term, I'd use a variable and a subscript. So that subscript would be the tiny little number that's next to the variable. If I want to talk about this first term in the sequence, the value of the first term would be a sub 1. If I ask what a sub 4 is, this would really mean what is the value of the fourth term in the sequence, and that would be 2. So what would be the eighth term in the sequence? Well, a sub 8, the value of the eighth term would be 13. In general, I could talk about any term in the sequence by using um, the term a sub n. Now, what is n? So n would be the term number. Just like here, this is the eighth term. a sub n would be the value of the eighth term. So the n indicates the term number. a sub n is the value of the term. So here, n is 4 meaning this is the fourth term. A sub 4 means what's the value of the fourth term, which is 2. So page 564 in your book kind of goes over what I just talked about. Um, also, with regards to the nth term, we also talk about, well, what about the term before the nth term? So that would be A sub n minus 1. And if I want a term that's after a given term, a sub n, that would be a sub n plus 1. So take a look at this example. There are four sequences given. See if you can identify the pattern and find the value of the listed term. So pause the video and give this a try. So here are the patterns. Whenever I'm trying to find the pattern of a sequence, I'd look at what's happening in between the terms. For the first term, you're adding 5 to get to the next term. If I want to find a sub 8, I'd have to find a sub 6, a sub 7, a sub 8. So the value of the 8th term, which is what this is asking, is 37. Second sequence, we're dividing by 2 each time. So if I want to find the value of the sixth ter term, I would just need to divide uh, the fifth term by 2. So 1.25 divided by 2 would be 0.625. Um, or you can write it as a fraction. Let's see, this is 5 fourths. So this would be the same as 5 eighths, 5 fourths divided by 2. Uh, the third one was maybe a little bit tricky. If you take the previous term and square it, so 1 squared plus 1 gives you 2. 2 squared plus 1 is 5. 5 squared plus 1 is 26. 26 squared plus 1 is 677. If I want to find a sub 3, I have it. Here it is. The value of the third term is 5. And the very last one, you're subtracting 7 each time. I've listed 5 terms, so if I want to find a sub 7, I'd have to subtract 7 two more times, and you should get out negative 34. Now, one of the main focuses of this chapter is on arithmetic sequences. So it's not pronounced ar arithmetic here. It's arithmetic sequences. And for arithmetic sequences, there's a constant difference between successive terms. Meaning, if I'm adding or subtracting the same amount every time to get the next term, that would be an arithmetic sequence. So if I look back to the previous page, are there any sequences where you're adding or subtracting the same amount every time? And I would say, sure, this is an arithmetic sequence. 
And this would be an arithmetic sequence also, because if I look between any two consecutive terms, I'm adding or subtracting the same amount every time. That's what makes a sequence an arithmetic sequence. So for arithmetic sequences, we have what's called the recursive formula and the explicit formula. Today we're going to look at the recursive formula. So the question is, what does the word recur mean? Um, I think of the great movie Groundhog Day. Recur means to happen repeatedly, like if you have a recurring nightmare. Um, or, you know, the recurring joy of coming to Algebra 2 class every day. Something that happens repeatedly. So the recursive formula is a way to find a particular term in a sequence by looking at the previous term. And here's the key point here. For the recursive formula, I'm relying on the previous term. So what is happening over and over to the previous term to get the next term in the sequence? For the recursive formula, it's going to look something like this. There's really two parts. The first part is you need to list the first term in the sequence. So I need to know where you're starting, and then I also want to know how to get the nth term or how to get the next term in the sequence. Well, if the recursive formula always relies on the previous term, if I'm telling you how to get the nth term, you should be listing something about the previous term, which would be the, ace, the n minus 1 term. So the value of the nth term would be a sub n. So this is saying to get the nth term, I would take five times the value of the previous term, and then subtract 10. This would be a case of the recursive formula. So let's take a look at this recursive formula a little uh, more closely. I want to find the first five terms in this sequence. So this is a recursive formula. Immediately, I should be able to know the first term. The value of the first term is 3. So that's the first term in the sequence. Then this is telling me again, to find the nth term, I want to take 5 times the previous term and subtract 10. So now I want to find a sub 2, or the value of the second term. So if I want to find a sub 2, I'm just going to take this n, and I'm going to plug in 2 for n. So n represents the number of the term. If I want the second term, I want a sub 2. So I have a sub 2 equals 5 times a sub 2 minus 1 minus 10. And really this is saying, OK, to get the second term, I want to take 5 times a sub, well, 2 minus 1 is 1. So I want to take 5 times the previous term, a sub 1, and subtract 10. So to get the second term, I'm taking 5 times the previous term, a sub 1, which is 3. This is a sub 1. And subtract 10. So a sub 2 should equal 15 minus 10, or 5. And I can keep repeating this process. So if I want to find the third term, I'd be plugging in 3 for n. So here I'm plugging in 3 for n. I'm taking 5 times a sub 3 minus 1 is a sub 2. a sub 2 is the term I just found. That was this 5. So I'm taking 5 times the previous term minus 10. I should get out 15. Now, do I want to write this out every time? No. I mean, I can kind of just start looking at the pattern. So if I take 15 times 5, that's 75, minus 10 would give me 65. And to find that last term, I would want to take 65 times 5, which is 325 minus 10, which is 315. So again, if I looked at this recursive formula, I probably wouldn't go through all this work. I'd be doing more of something like this. I almost forgot my last question here. Is this sequence arithmetic? What do you think? I would say no. If I look at the difference between the terms, well, 5 minus 3 is 2. Is 15 minus 5 2? Uh, no, that would be 10. 
So in between each term, if I take any term and subtract it from the previous term, 65 minus 15, 315 minus 65, I'm not getting the same difference between consecutive terms, so this is not arithmetic. If I do have an arithmetic sequence, the recursive formula is actually going to look something like this. First part stays the same. I need to list the first term where I'm starting. And then for an arithmetic sequence, to get to the nth term, so to find any term, I would just need to take the previous term, and I need to add on some constant difference. So either I'm adding you know, 7 or I'm adding negative 3 each time. That would give me an arithmetic sequence. Um, this last part here technically should be written. It's just saying that the value of n is anything beyond 1. So this is how you would obtain anything after the first term. Um, if you leave this out, you know, it's not a huge deal, but technically that should be part of the recursive formula. So take a look at this sequence. See if you can find the pattern. And see if you can write the recursive formula. So pause the video at this time. First thing I notice is that this is an arithmetic sequence. If I take any term and subtract the previous term, I get that constant difference. So any term minus the previous term. That gives me the difference that we are calling D on this page. So my constant difference is negative 3. And then if you're writing the recursive formula, you should have started by saying the value of the first term is 40. And then you need to tell the reader how to get to the nth term. So to get to any term in the sequence, you're going to take the previous term. So if I want to get to the 10th term, n would be 10, I would need to take the 9th term, or 10 minus 1. And then I need to subtract 3. So essentially, to get to any term, I need to take the previous term and subtract 3. And then if we want to be really technical, I should say that this is for any term beyond the first term. That's your recursive formula for this sequence. So last example, uh, let's say I bought 100 pencils, and let's just say I lose some pencils each week to students. So each week I lose the same number of pencils. This right here, if I'm losing the same number of pencils, that indicates there's a constant rate of change or there's a constant difference. So that statement right there would lead me to believe that this is an arithmetic sequence. And it says after 18 weeks, I have 64 pencils left. Write the recursive formula for the amount of pencils I have left after n weeks. So really, two things I need to know. I need to know how many pencils did I have after the first week. That's the starting amount. And then I need to know what's happening each week, how many pencils are being lost. So think about this for a moment. Pause the video. See if you can come up with what that constant difference is or how many pencils are being lost each week. So here's my train of thought. I started with 100 pencils, and I lost the same number every week for 18 weeks. So I'm calling that number, that constant difference, D. So each week for 18 weeks, I lost that same number of pencils. And after 18 weeks, or after I subtract that constant difference 18 times, I should be left with 64. If you subtract 100 from each side, 64 minus 100 would give you negative 36. And negative 36 divided by negative 18 would be 2. So it appears that each week, two pencils are being lost. If you're writing the recursive formula, um, careful. This, this would almost be like the a sub 0 value or the initial value. So a sub 1, if this is after n weeks, how many pencils would I have after the first week? Well, if I started with 100 and I lose two per week, after the first week, I'd actually have 98 pencils. And then the nth week, well, I'll define how many pencils I have in the nth week, where n is any number. I'm going to take the previous week, or the amount of pencils I have the previous week, 
and then I would lose two more the following week. And then technically, that second line is how I would get any term, the value of any term beyond the first week. So this is the recursive formula. You may be noticing some limitations. If I wanted to find how many pencils were left after the 30th week, I'd have to know how many there were the 29th week and then subtract two. So certainly the recursive formula have some, has some limitations which will lead us into the next lesson and the explicit formula.